a warm welcome to my craft room. Carol here. You can see I have really uh, thick packing tape on the top of this box. I'm sending this out to one of my subscribers of the last two videos that I did, a card and a matching box. So I'm going to send this out as a gift and I wanted to wrap it and I want to color and draw an image on the top of the packing paper. So this is how I did it. I put the box and the card inside another box. Then I put packing tape, that really uh, thick packing tape, to cover that. And now I will cover the packing tape with 100 pound paper. And this is going to go under the brown pa um, postage paper that you see there on the left side. So it's super early in the morning and my body's woken up, but my voice hasn't. So <laughs> if I sound like it's growling, that's why it doesn't want to be up. <laughs> yeah. If you watch my videos, you know that I, I, I like to do my videos super early. Okay, so here we go. Let's get some tape out. We're going to tape this box up. This is not, I'm not showing you how. We all know how to wrap a gift. You can see that uh, packing tape, how I have it on there. I just wanted to secure the package and now I am going to secure the mailing paper. And then I found this lovely Beatrix Potter image on the internet and it was done in watercolor because if you see Beatrix Potter drawings, they generally are done in watercolor, basic, easy watercoloring. Watercoloring, if you're going to want to learn to color, I think watercoloring is a great start before you start uh, coloring with pencil mediums. That's my opinion. Now, um, I color for fun, and so if you get any inspiration off of here, it's due to the fact that I love to color. It's not due to the fact that this is how it's done if you're an artist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is for fun. Now, I like to have two, three erasers there, just on the safe side. I have a small one, and you know, they clip out. You just press the top of the um, pen, or the pencil thingy-dingy there, and the eraser pops out. I'm putting stamps up here and I'm going to tell you why. I also wrote the top but I took that up because once I start drawing obviously I'm going to know where the top is, right? So, uh, but I'm not going to send this in the mail like it is like this. I just did not have a good feeling even though I am putting a co covering over top of my work. I, I did put it in a box and I'm going to send it out in the box on the safe side. Uh, with the mail these days, you know, it, I don't know how it would show up. <laughs> Somebody put the boots to it. It doesn't look too nice after you do all this work, right? So here we go. I am attempting to draw the Beatrix Buddy. Easy drawing. Even if you don't draw, if you don't like to draw, if you place some type of image, let's say this bunny on the screen, you really can um, draw it with practice. And um, when I draw, I have to see the image. I can't draw it like, you know, just close my eyes and picture a bunny and then take a pencil and draw it. That would be crazy. So um, I know my limitations and I know how I do things. And another thing I must explain right here at the beginning of the tutorial is I am ambidextrous. I do write with both my left and my right hand. So sometimes you'll see me fighting to put the pen, pencil, the eraser, the, the coloring mediums over to my left hand. My left hand saying, give me that pencil. And my right hand is saying, no, I want the pencil. So I thought instead of both of them fighting over the pencils, I decided to give them each a pencil and you'll see me drawing with two hands. <laughs> That way I have an excuse if it doesn't turn out right. <laughs> I'll blame the left hand. <laughs> or I'll pop over and I'll blame the right hand <laughs> for the mess that's on the page. But I do work with both hands. You do know that if you do view my coloring tutorials. I um, 
it saves time, but it doesn't look like that when you look at how much time I have uh, on this tutorial, right? It saves time, you're saying to yourself, where? <laughs> well, the beauty of the internet is you can stop the tutorial and come back 400 times to finish it. <laughs> Do it in 10 minute intervals, right? What's nice about this uh, Beatrix Potter bunny is you're not drawing the whole image. You're, you're drawing the face, the ears, and then the little bunny has a jacket on and then covering the bottom portion of the body are flowers and leaves. So it is an easy, easier, let's go like that, image for you to draw if you want to take on something like this. I found it uh, a nice, easy, yet satisfying a drawing to color. I, I think it's nice to learn how to draw the fur especially on a bunny. And uh, you have a lot of areas where you're going to get the uh, the shading, you know, like under the face, under the armpit, um, on the base of the flower, behind the leaves, just some easy coloring. And here I'm using, I think here I'm using an H pencil. I can't see it this early in the morning. I can't see anything. I haven't even had a cup of tea. So, um, I just came out and it was nice and early and quiet and I thought let's get at her and get this voiceover finished so I can get it up to YouTube. So if I'm looking at it, I'm trying to slow it down. I'm pretty sure I started with an H pencil, a nice hard pencil and light, you know, because I do have a heavy hand, um, I have a heavy arm. <laughs> I like to press down. I don't know if it's that because I ride my Harley. I'm always, you know, my right hand uh, is always wanting to work and that's because I like to go fast. <laughs> yeah. I don't work my left hand, well except for the clutch. You know, I have to pull in all the time to change the gears, but uh, yeah, I generally have a heavy hand so I realize that and then I use my pencils accordingly. Okay, so these are, are Stadler art pencils. I like them, and you will probably like them because they're affordable and they do the job. Oh, and have yourself a makeup brush, you know, a cheek brush, uh, to wipe off all of your, um, you know, your eraser, gooby things, and uh, your crayon, your coloring medium pencils. Even if you do it in crayons, it'd be great, but don't flick it with your hand because you are going to have it on your hand. You're going to move your hand across the package and guess what? You're going to have color. So take a nice splash brush. This is from my dollar store where nothing's a dollar. And I, I love it. It's nice and soft. It's large and it gets rid of all the unnecessary things I want to have on top of the package. Just took care of the whiskers. Whiskers are really nice. They're just wispy. You just take, you, you lay your pencil down and then pull it out so that you get the uh, thicker uh, pencil marking from where you began and then you're going to let up so it has a thin, you know, because it's hair, you want it to be thinner at the end, not thicker. It's not like it's a, um, a beard. Not that I know anything about having a beard. <laughs> I hope not. But, yeah, that's how I think of it. And then you have these little dots that you put in at the beginning of uh, the whisker going out. And we'll do that later. Uh, I need to explain another thing, if you haven't watched my tutorials before, is that I am ambidextrous. I can write with both my left and my right hand. And the thing about that is uh, my right and my left hand fight for the pencils. They both want to draw. And that's the struggle that I have. My brain is saying, uh, put it in the left hand. My left hand likes to be busy, but so does my right hand. It likes to be busy too. So the, both the left and the right hand struggle <laughs> for time. And I have to, you know, give them both the same amount of time as I'm drawing. You know, I'll even use the eraser on one of the hands, uh, one of my hands, and move it over so they both get their due time on this video. They do like that. 
And now that I've got a lot of the image down, this is the jacket I'm working on, I'm going to uh, put a paper towel down to place my hand on. Otherwise, I am going to get some of the oils off my hands because, you know, you wash your hands if you put some hand cream on. If I know I'm going to dry, don't put hand cream on my hands because I know that's going to transfer onto the paper. So that's a little something to think about this morning. And you ask me, oh, why do you explain that with the, the two-handed thing? Well, if you're just coming in and you're not starting at the beginning, you're going to wonder, what's this woman doing? She's coloring with uh, both her hands. <laughs> yeah, and I don't like them to fight. I don't like my hands to fight for time. So I give them both as much time as they want. So, oh, oh excuse me, yes, you know, he travels across there. Uh, he has places to go and things to do today. It is a Monday morning. So, um, yeah, he just took a trip and we like to see him on my videos. So off he goes. So now I will just take my eye and go. Uh, it's a good thing my eyes don't work, um, like to work at different times. <laughs> you know, you have these traveling eyes. Uh, that's for another time, right? No. <laughs> yeah. No, my eyes are fine, uh, basically, as long as I keep my glasses on. <laughs> They're great. Now I'm going to do some leaves, this flower, and uh, as a reminder, I'm looking at an image on the screen of my Mac in front of me. So uh, it's a nice, huge desk Mac, uh, and so I get the image nice and big. But if you have a small computer, you can always blow it up, whatever. Whatever you do, just work, whatever you have, you just work with it, right? So here I am, there's two flowers here. There's this lovely carnation rose type of flower. And then there's another flower that almost looks like a lily. Um, I don't know what it is actually. This one I'm drawing right there. It almost looks like leaves of a flower also. But I, it's when I look at the picture, which I will leave in the description, the picture that I am drawing from up on the screen. You can decide for yourself what you think it is. I just colored it. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, I did. <laughs> this is how I feel this morning. <laughs> I that's why I have him in there. It's just like, whoa, I'm going to fly in and then all of a sudden I got tired and out I went. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's start with the coloring. I love to lay down tons of color. As we all know, I'm working with Prisma pencils, a beautiful wax pencil. I have an automatic pencil sharpener that stops when it's sharp. And this is another thing if you're heavy handed, you want to uh, always be mindful that that point will only stay on if you keep the weight of your hand light. <laughs> yeah. So I don't always do it, you know. But uh, it's just a reminder. And if I want to get in small places, I hold my pencil more uh, straight up and down than on a slant. Because, you know, sometimes I don't get that point put on there. I, I forget. And if I go take my pencil, I'm going to the left. That's where my automatic pencil sharpener is. So now we're going to do the jacket. This is a base. So don't worry too much. Uh, just, if, you know, the, I want a pink jacket. The jacket on the image is pink, so I went with it. And I will lay down all kinds of pink color. And generally, I like to lay down more, if it's, if it's not like a cartoon type character, I will lay down red and I will work over top of red uh, as a base. Red's a, a very nice color base. You can see I'm using it here over top of the pink and I'm going to go around and do the um, here's where I think here's where my hands are struggling uh, my left hand wants some time in this video oh uh, here's my Prisma pencil I love to put them in glass bowls and so that I can visually see the colors and take them out quickly and uh, so let's get back to the fight of my hands yes when you do um, use both hands they both want the same amount of time. So I, I'm mindful of that. 
because my left hand would just keep jumping in. It'll be grabbing pencils. It'll be doing all crazy things. And I'm there, you know what? Let's, I'll give you both uh, the same amount of time. Now this pencil I'm using here is a blending pencil. I want to, this is, I'm not blending. As you can see, I'm pushing the color into the light color. So I'll use that blending pencil. It's uh, kind of a, let's see, I don't know. It looks like a light, light brown, um, white color. But the beauty of these pencils, it'll be written on them. <laughs> blending pencil. So you don't have to worry. Yes, companies make it real easy for those of us that like to color. And uh, this is just a hobby for me. It's nothing that I take too seriously. And I find if you don't take it too seriously, you end up uh, enjoying your project much more. You really do. Now I'm going under the neck of the bunny with darker colors because this is where <clears throat> obviously the shading, the dark values will be because the sun is not going to reach or the lights, whatever, underneath the bunny's head or <clears throat> places that uh, like underneath the armpit, uh, places where you can naturally just look at it and know that it's not going to be brighter underneath those um, lines. So here I go, I'm grabbing a nice deep red and this jacket's going to be pink. You're not going to see this red as much. You're just going to see a darker value underneath the bunny's head. And uh, yeah, and I worked away for a long time trying to get uh, this to look like watercolor. If it didn't look like watercolor, it didn't bother me because I'm using pencils, so nobody's going to be the wiser, right? It's just, uh, yeah, and it was an H pencil, I think I see right there. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that uh, I can kind of share with you there? You know I like to use colors that, well, generally somebody wouldn't grab that color. This is more of an orangey red that I'm going in with here because when I finish up, you're going to see that this is a light pink jacket. But I do like to have an underlay of color that if I take anything off, or want to add anything, uh, I'm going to have a really nice thick base underneath. It will show through, which is really nice. And as you color, you know, as you get more practice in, I don't get a lot of practice in because I like to do other things, you know, little artsy things other than just straight coloring. So, but I wanted to send this out to Bob and Mary as a uh, random act of kindness gift. And so I wanted to do something special on top of the box. I do that a lot. You know that if you follow me. I like to draw on my packages that I send out and my envelopes. Wherever there's a space that I want to fill up with something, that's what I like to do. And uh, we're going to see... Uh, a lot of things that necessarily aren't what artists would do if they were professionally coloring something, but this is not a professional coloring video. And you know, let me just say this here. It, uh, number one, don't get intimidated by anything. That I don't. When I start coloring, I don't think of artists that I see their work on how wonderful they look, cartoonists, how easy they make it look and, uh, you know, get intimidated. That's a terrible thing to do. It, it, it puts the negative right into your head and then you don't enjoy the process because you're trying to perfect what you're doing. Don't do that. Just have fun with it. And no one will be the wiser on whether there's dark underneath, you know. They're not going to look at it and say, oh, look at that. It should have been darker underneath the head. They're not going to do that. They're going to be thankful they have a box to open. And, you know, if they want, they can cut this out and frame it. Uh, just to put in a child's room would be cute. Um, whatever, you know, just as a piece of memorabilia. If I ever do become famous. <laughs> Yeah. See how I don't take I don't take myself seriously. I really don't. 
because it takes the fun out of the work, it tenses you up, and why do you want to be all tensed up and worried about, you know, putting perfection into your work? It's not what art is. Art is a release of tension that you build up, say, through the week or through the day. And so you don't want to be thinking of values and shading and whatever. Oh, my left hand is really excited here. It's getting to use the blush brush, brushing off some of the color. Now my gold, my white pencil um, is way down there. I use white quite a bit, you know, to get that sunlight sweet spot in uh, areas of my coloring. So it's not as long as the other. So I bought extension, this gold. Well, I bought a few of them so that I don't, you know, I can work my pencils right down to the bottom. And I love uh, the weight of the upper portion of the pencil for some reason. I'd love to put these on all of the Prisma pencils, but that'd be crazy because who wants to invest that kind of money to put it all in there? But you do need a few of them to save on the actual uh, pencil. You don't want to be getting rid of your pencils with, you know, that much left on it. So buy these extension, these metal extensions. They just uh, screw on, you slide your pen, screw loose, slide your pencil down, and then tighten her up. And there you have it. And then when I see it, I can, I know it's the white pencil. You know, whatever pencil I use quite a bit, I put an extension on it because I can look at it. I don't have to be looking. Is Where's that white pencil, you know? And I keep my uh, pencil lead that I'm using generally up. So I have a glass bowl. I like all of the uh, the uh, pencil leads to face up because if you throw it down you're going to break your pencil lead when it goes into the bowl. This is just, th these are no-brainer things <laughs> I'm telling you here. This is nothing like, uh, you know, we all don't know. If you put something in and it, you know, clinks on the bottom of something, you're going to use lose the the beautiful point on your pencil. So I try to keep them all face up. And another reason is I can see the color. I don't want to see the pencil um, uh, I'm not thinking lead. I, I don't want to see the uh, base of the pencil, let's say, because it's not true to the uh, actual pencil lead. So, you know, I think you know what I'm saying, and as, as my brain wakes up here, I may come back to it because, uh, you know, I always think of the things they store inside my head of what I wasn't able to say. So here I'm going with my sweet spots, those little bright areas I know I want in, okay, here we go, here we go. My left hand has had enough. It's there. Okay, Carol, I, I'm not just sitting there, okay? We can get this done much quicker if you just use my ability on the left side of your hand, of your uh, body, and take that pencil and get in there and both of us will work at the same time. So here we are, I'm going to once again, and you're thinking to yourself, Carrie, you already did this, you already did the dark eyes, why are you going back? I don't know, this is just what I like to do. I like to go back and I like a ton of layers when I'm working with Prisma pencils because it's a wax base and it certainly does work, uh, do the work it's meant to do. And if you want to take off some of the color with the wax, you can do it very easily with your, um, that pencil that I showed you there, the, uh, oh, see what I mean? Yeah, I should probably make myself a tea so I can wake my brain up, shouldn't I? But we'll get back to that. Layer up, just keep layering. And then stop if you think you like the look of it. Now, because the image that I drew from on the screen is in a soft watercolor, I don't look up at that because it's kind of like a runny, a drip watercolor where it's it's just a, a drop of color and it, and it wicks and it's beautiful if you're watercoloring. But I can drop color and there's no wicking going to happen in it because it's not wet. <laughs> yeah. But you can get your Gamsol out if you want to use your Gamsol and move around uh, 
the color here. It would look beautiful. It really would. Here I'm just getting the dark, like I said, more dark values. And I'm not... This is just hours of playing is what it is. And I, if I'm going to color, I want to get practice time in. I want to get practice uh, at getting better at coloring um, so I don't have to use my brain that much on, you know, what am I doing? How does it look better? I don't think, well, how would somebody else do it? I already, I think I talk about that all the time. Do not compare yourself to somebody else. That's where you run into all kinds of complications in your brain. You're struggling to be something you're not, and um, that'll drive you nuts. It truly will. And we don't need nuts today, do we? Unless they're chocolate covered or something. <laughs> yeah. So don't compare yourself to other people, please. Um, just have fun. And if you can draw some inspiration or a few smiles, a few giggles on this tutorial, and it makes you want to get your pencils because generally if we uh, are crafting or doing something, we have pencils or paint or Copics, whatever we have, and we can incorporate the same type of uh, philosophy of coloring, if you want to say it that way, and uh, with every medium we use. So there you go. So what I like to think is, okay, is the end of this uh, piece of jacket flipped up? Is it laying down? Um, yeah. And I, you know, I don't know if it's the light that makes the, if you look on the sleeve there, it looks like it's uh, got this, uh, I don't know, something right in the middle there. But um, I don't know. I'm trying to think what I was thinking of while I was doing this. Probably not too much. <laughs> I, I let my brain relax when I color. Uh, that way I don't get tense. I don't worry about here. I'm just getting out my mid-tone, my dark tone, my light tones of the browns. I don't want to be going and having to search for them. So I lay them out somewhere to the right or the left or right on top of the box if there's a nice paper towel there. Carol, I just said that. And then what do I do? I slap them right on. I do the opposite of what I'm saying. Oh, here I need to use this extender on this color right now, right, that I'm using right here. Now these are the browns. I like to use the coppers, the light. Uh, this is has red in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a thing for putting, even in the brown tones, of getting a little bit of the copper red in there. These are funny looking buttons, but they're exactly the look of the buttons when I show you the picture that I cased this from. They look just like this. They're, they're like little rocks. and uh, But I don't you know, it's in watercolor. I'm going to stress that so you're not going to get the same look. Uh, unless that's what you're trying to achieve and then you're going to work much harder and your brain's going to be tired and you're not going to want to finish it. <laughs> Isn't that encouraging this morning? Yes. So I just went around and I love to, uh, and you can see my right hand has a pencil. My right hand sometimes will have three pencils in it and I will just bend my fingers to which pencil I want to use. I think as we go on you're going to see that. And that, that's why I want to stress that this is just the way I color. I'm able to use both hands. Um, you know, it's like double mint gun. I get double the pleasure. I get to use each hand and move along much quicker and satisfy them, you know, as uh, they are, uh, what can I say, what are they? <laughs> they are... Uh, important on um, you know to say the least to have a left hand and a right hand and if you can uh, work both of them and that's what I'm doing here I'm just going okay I'll do the left side with my left hand and the right side with my right hand and everybody's happy yes here we go and can you believe like don't even start counting all the layers that I put on here under the armpit here we go again I'm getting some darker tones and then I'm coloring, I'm covering it up with white. 
Yeah, one thing about me is I, I can't explain what I do. You know, my brain just automatically does what it wants. <laughs> I've been that way all my life. You know, if that's what I want to do, well, I do it. If I want to stop what I'm doing and jump out on my heart and go for a boot, that's what I do. And then I come back and I start coloring or, you know, just uh, whatever. And uh, now, oh, here we go. I, I thought, okay, the jacket, <clears throat> excuse me, the jacket I'll come back to because it's not done, as you can see. But I got sick of coloring with just the pinks. I thought, okay, I want to use some of these browns. So, um, and, and something else, you know, if you have dotalism, uh, you like to do dotalism, you know, where you just set down dots of different values, you know, you pound it out and you've got dark, darker dots and keep it soft. You have, you know, lighter dots that you can work with. If you like dotalism and you like to use those uh, dotalism pens that I have, I should get them out and do more tutorials on them. They're beautiful. Yeah, I remember I did that canvas with, uh, I wish I had didn't have it so fast in the edit, but I did that canvas with the uh, Beatrix Potter couple. They were bunnies, they were a couple, and they were out for a picnic, and then they had 462,000 little bunnies, because that's what they do. You know, they don't waste time. Uh, they don't have spare time. They just make little babies. And I did that on a canvas back. You can go back in my videos and find that. That's the card I was showing you there, the postcard. It's up there underneath the pencil glass holder to the right-hand side. It, isn't that fantastic? It shows you absolutely nothing, but I'm telling you where it is. I don't, the only thing I use, a basic little dotalism technique, is when I'm putting down the fur. And we're going to do that later. So don't even worry yourself on that. So here I'm showing you, I basically grabbed two of the extenders and I love that they're metal and I love that I don't, I get to use my pencils right down to the bottom. Now this is the, um, where you can stretch your color with that pencil I'm using right there. Uh, yeah, I should know what it is. I mentioned it at the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, my brain's all over the place here, um, but it moves the color. Let's let's just say that for right now. So I will use my sweet spot using a lighter beige type color for now. I'll come back with the white, but uh, the two colors I don't like to put down, if you want to call them colors, I don't think they do in, uh, they're not uh, recognized as true colors, the black and the white. But they, they're colors to me. and uh, But I don't like to use straight black. I don't like to use straight white. I like something underneath the white and, put, and then lay down the white when I'm working with the soft spots. But uh, sweet spots, that's what I like to call them. So here I, um, we're just going to enjoy some chit chat and, uh, and I'll explain a uh, few things that I'm thinking of when I'm coloring. There are so many, let me just bounce this in here this morning, there's so many beautiful artists on YouTube that if you want to know the basics and the fundamentals of coloring, go to those. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling you to get off my video here. But my tutorials are for inspiration and fun and relaxation, okay? It is not a learning video, you know, as I'm going to, uh, well, if you watch my videos, you know I say it all the time. There's my um, Bosnick, I think it's called, pencil sharpener. I love it because it stops at the point. You don't waste, you know, you're not always going zing, 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 and Next thing you know, you've got to buy 600 extenders because you just spent the last 10 minutes trying to get a point on your pencil. No, it stops and you get the point. Get the point? Do you get the point this morning, what I'm trying to say? I hope so. And then I will put paper towels down so that my um, pencils don't roll, roll off my island here. So let's get back to it. I know the darker 
value has to be underneath the face again, like in the jacket. So I'll get out a whole lot of, um, you know, I'm going to stop here. i got to grab that, uh, the name of this pencil that moves the uh, Prisma wax. Just a second. Well, my friends, it is the Colorless Blender. <laughs> That's not so hard, is it? The Colorless Blender. So let's uh, start blending. Let's get all of the darker values underneath the folds. Anywhere where you think the sun is, when it's hitting it, is not going to show. It's going to be deepened because of the shade. That's all you think about. If you get it, that's great. If you don't, nobody's going to be the wiser, I don't think. It's not going to go up into any museum. And always remember in the back of your mind that this is for fun, enjoyment, relaxation, and stress free. That's the key, stress free. You know, you do want to have some fun. I was out yesterday. I just, this was so encouraging. And I ran into a parent that I had known in the office that they brought their children to the orthodontic office. And he said uh, he was really surprised that I had retired so early. And he really missed going to the office and, uh, you know, the fun and the kids really enjoyed um, the interaction with me. And I would always talk them into getting their elastics and colors. You know, I'd say, wouldn't it be fun, you know, to do your front elastics purple and then go to black and then add some pink and whatever. And uh, they loved experimenting with color. It's just a way to transit transition, you know, unless they wanted clear elastics, of course, somewhat clear because they don't want it to be so noticeable. But I used to have so much fun with uh, all of the uh, patients that came in, and I do miss it. But, uh, you know, uh, retiring early was great as well, and uh, I'm able to do this now. You know, have some fun on the internet and get to meet new people and, uh, yeah, and, and color. <laughs> yes. And I love running into uh, all of the people I used to see at the office and uh, their parents. And, you know, you, you end up building a family, even in the workplace. And uh, the same is here on YouTube. So I always stress to make everything as relaxed and carefree as you possibly can. Uh, creative time is to set aside all those stressful things. And I know you're saying, Carol, why are you going on with stress, stress, stress? Well, we all have it, my friends. Uh, whether you want to admit it or you don't, we all have stress in one form or another. You're either stressing out when you're trying to color, you're stressing out... Uh, I'll tell you what I stress out about. I hate grocery shopping. <laughs> I say, I mean, talk about going from one thing, you know, from orthodontics to shopping for groceries. But uh, I, I went shopping yesterday for groceries, and I'm going to tell you, it is um, such, it's decision making, you know. Like, do I get this or why? Oh, I'm not getting that. That's not on sale. No, I'm going to wait for the sale. Or, you know, uh, I went to look for pierogi, puda, whatever you call it, and they had changed the brand, and it drove me crazy. And then, you know, I said to the girl, I, I saw one of the workers there, and I said, you changed um, your pierogi bags to another brand. Why did you do that? I, I really like this one brand. It was so close to my mother's recipe, you know, and... Uh, so anyway, she said, well, why don't you try this one? So I said, yes, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'm open to that. And uh, yeah, so I haven't opened the box yet. You know, you fry up some onions and bacon. And then you, um, with butter, of course. And then you uh, boil your pierogi. And I get the cheese and potato pierogi. Uh, that's just what I make. Well, I don't make it now. I found somebody that makes it so close. Why would I make it? You know what I mean? I'd rather color. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I haven't tried it, but then you get some nice sour cream. I'm not talking diet thin, syrupy sour cream. The good stuff, the 14% or 18% as high as you can get. Nice thick sour cream. And you put a dollop on your pierogi, then you get you pour your onion and your um, bacon and nice bacon. I take my bacon strips, I hold them over the frying pan, and I cut them with a knife into little half-inch strips to fry them up. I, I don't like bacon chips or, you know, anything. So anyway, I'm going to try those. I'll let you know what I think of the new brand of pierogies. Or if you're Ukrainian, puda. There we are. Yes. My... Um, taste buds. Well, I just had my breakfast. I had my breakfast late. I had to go down and uh, I was going to have, uh, let's see, what was I going to have as I'm coloring. You're just seeing where I hit the light. I want to do pink on the outer ear and the inner ear. A lighter pink right where I'm putting the brown there and then I'll add it. I put so many layers that I can't tell you what I'm going to put next until I see where I've stopped. You can see I have the colorless blender in my right hand here in case I want to shift them. And it's a good uh, habit to get into to put a few pencils in so that, and then get, uh, you know, flip them. It's like, uh, you know, years gone by where you had the baton. Remember, now that goes back a little ways, but where you had a baton and you would twirl it and then you throw it in the air and then after it hit you and you went to emergency and you got everything taken care of <laughs> you never took up the baton again <laughs> I did I didn't care it was just like uh yeah it was just like uh like I said a learning curve and uh there we go that uh, certainly goes back a little time but they have them now like you can find uh, twirling batons if you're if you so want to do that <laughs> oh let's get off that subject right so here we go I'm going to have the left hand and the right hand uh, start working together so I can get this tutorial up and running I never think of putting you know doing an edit or putting the tutorial up while I'm coloring because honestly this is my time to relax and not get hung up on anything else but coloring. I don't, um, you know, I take out some of the edit and then I don't put in some of the voiceover. So I have to remember whether I said it back earlier or I didn't. But I'm going to say this again, and maybe I said it twice or three times. Please don't compare yourself to other artists. And the word artists is a person that loves to create art. And um, that is a dangerous thing to do. And because we have, you know, I have a YouTube channel, whatever, I try not to go over and uh, look at too many other comparable sites that I view, that I could view, because the natural tendency, here I'm making a little bit of hair on the outside of the ear. And you want to put, um, this is where the white will come in handy to separate the hair. And you want to make sure that your pencil, I'm going over and making sure it, it they are sharpened very well. But uh, that's what I'm doing here. And so back to what I was saying, if this is what I was saying, is being comparing yourself. I think that's uh, so much on YouTube. I, oh, see, now you want to get out your brush brush. You don't want to flick that with your, your paw. You want to make sure you grab your blush brush and do it that way. But I want to stress to you, don't worry whether you can do it like this person or you can color or draw. If you don't draw and you find it impossible to draw, they have a lot of stamps we have a lot of stamps in our stash, I'm sure, and you could stamp out something and then practice some coloring. But I just encourage you to not compare yourself. And I say this not only in art, in anything. You know, 
we uh, women tend to uh, want to compare. You know, com you compare your clothes, you compare your makeup, you compare your hair. You, we're we're one to always, you know, compare, and that's not the way you should do it. That that adds stress and. Uh, you are an individual, and so you do what makes you feel comfortable. You wear your clothes on what makes you comfortable. And um, if you're a frilly, girly person like myself, and you like to have all the bling-bling and the jewels, things, and whatever, and you like to do your makeup and uh, enjoy things like that, go ahead and do it. And, you know, that's why people say they, they are so, uh, I get a lot of comments that they can't believe that I have a Harley. I have a nice 1440 soft tail deluxe and uh, pearl white and black. I love it. it. This is the time, summer's coming up, where it releases stress for me also. And I can't wait. I've already been out. I'll tell you what, we had those two days of really nice weather here in Ontario, and I took advantage of it and had a, a good boot out, uh, went to Niagara-on-the-Lake to visit my sister, and uh, yeah, had a really good time. So, anywho, let's get back to coloring. There's only so much I can tell you when we're coloring, right? Uh, I have to go out and just uh, mention a few things that we just gabbed together. Here I'm going to also do little hair flicks and I'm going to separate them with a white or a cream. You can actually use a gray, would look lovely, but uh, you want to get those hairs in there. Now if you have a Dautilism pen, I should have got it out just to show you, I did do a rabbit in Dautilism uh, way back when, I can't remember, probably a few years ago. I, when I bought that Dautilism pen, it's an automatic. It just you just press the like a pen, and it just starts going up and down, up and down. And you can get uh, thicker dots by pressing down on the pen, or lighten up by lifting up. And I did a, a rabbit that looked very nice with Dautilism. So um, Stampscapes is where I uh, found that. Uh, trait to do that. He, uh, Kevin does his um, stamps. He obviously creates his own stamps using the Dautilism technique and I just, I really appreciate it. And uh, so I'll leave a link to his channel and you can go over. He's putting up quite a few videos I see lately and uh, I want to get over there because he's very talented. Not only does he create his own stamps, but he shows us how to use them and get the best uh, out of them, you know, creative-wise. So I'm sure you've all heard of him, and uh, yeah. So I'll leave that, and here we go. Let's get back to this. It's, uh, you, and another thing you see with me, I'm, I jump all over the place. I don't concentrate on one thing. I guess I should, but in life, I've never done that. I, uh, you know... It's, I, I don't know if it's just a habit you get into where you, you know, you can, you're doing one thing and then all of a sudden you look over and you see something that needs to be done and you stop what you're doing and you run over and do whatever it is you saw that needed to be done and then you go, uh, what, what was I just doing, you know? I have to get back there and so you almost need like uh, horse blinders for me that I stick at exactly what I'm doing and not get outside the lines, so to speak. But anywho, yeah, that's just uh, what's going on with me lately. And uh, the eyes. Now you can see I'm using a dark gray right there because the dark gray, and I mean a dark gray, will give you the same value as black. But black, my friends, does not look good, plain. There's something that dulls out if you use black. Now, I used black. I just say that, and then I go, I run over and I start blackening the eyes. But it's after I put a base of gray on there. And, um, you know, you want to put that sweet spot in the eye, like I did here. And uh, th this is where on the whiskers you're going to put that little dot and then push the whisker out. 
it's uh, if you look at whiskers on uh, cats or I, I'm not a cat person I'm a dog person but I know that uh, they have that little dot embedded in the skin and then the whisker comes out well that's what you want to do here just kind of relate to other things and add it and, and I'm telling you I had so much fun doing this and another thing you have to remember you're working on craft paper you're working on a brown you know beige type paper and this is a wrapping paper it's not even a craft you know 120 pound uh, paper it's a light light weight uh, wrapping paper so um, yeah so here I am using the colorless blender there's another color uh, this peach light light peach color and I don't know if this is what I'm using here to lighten up the brown as I go over and, and I think <laughs> I think it looks funny when you see um, when you see yourself or somebody steps into your video it almost looks like somebody else is helping me color doesn't it because I'm using my left hand but uh, it, it's hard for people that um, are left-handed like I was left-handed and then when I got into grade six the teacher that I had didn't like that the way that my left hand made the letters they were straight up and down and she wanted them over to like pointing to the right and slanted to the right so she changed me over to using my right hand and I had to stay after school believe this or not and uh, practice with my right hand when I was left-handed and so that's why now I can write left-handed or right-handed they both feel just as comfortable as you can see right here and uh, I, I should thank her her name was Mrs. Hall and uh, thank you Mrs. Hall that was you know people say oh that's not good on the brain well it was for me nothing really affects my brain <laughs> If you follow my videos, I think you can say, yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right, Carol. But, anywho, yeah, you have to, this is ways you keep young, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, fun. You just want to have fun. And you want to uh, do it by whatever media, whatever you like to do, okay? Uh, I remember taking the piano and uh, lessons, and it really was difficult I found it that's the only thing I think I found difficult because I was left and right-handed was uh, the chords you know um, you, you practice I'd want to practice with my left hand but you had to use your right hand which was good because it strengthened my right hand uh, so much but I'm, I'm just saying yeah I, I'm just gabbing on here I just want to show you that I want to round out the center of the bunny's face, so I'll do it using a lighter value, a lighter uh, Prisma pencil. And then I'll go back because the strokes here, this is where I'm getting the fur look. And I'm going to do a sweet spot right in the center. And uh, yeah. So I, I snuck out and had some breakfast. I was going to have oatmeal with blueberries, you know, frozen blueberries on top. That way it thaws and you get some nice frozen blueberry juice. Nice, uh, that's the sweet for your oatmeal. And I ended up having the yogurt. <laughs> yeah. So, what can I tell you? That's what I'm saying. You know, I get down there and I just said, no, yogurt will suffice for, for now. And uh, here we go. You can see that I'm pulling in. Uh, I'm probably going over to make a point on that uh, pencil sharpener and then if you want you know if you want to not sharpen in between just hold your pencil straight up and that way you get the point of the pencil lead instead of the side of the pencil lead and you'll see you'll notice that it's more up and down if I'm doing strokes that I want to be fine and it'll all turn out and you know what in the picture that I looked at to get the basic uh, to draw this right none of this was there because it was done in a wet form watercolor it was just a, a wet to wet um, image with watercolor wet on wet so uh, 
Yes. So here, I'm just doing whatever comes into my brain at the time. And uh, that works too. And there's the old brush. There's the little dot you see me making. And then I will get a heavy hand and then lift up to make the whisker. And I'm going to a black. Yes, I am. After I already said, I don't like to use black too often because it is a, a color. Well, they say it's not a color, but I find it a color. And uh, it, it's flat. I'd rather use a dark, dark gray. And uh, here I am just brushing it out. And I, at the end, I end up going back and smoothing out, smoothing out, smoothing the color out. And uh, this is so much fun. Add another little whisker underneath. That'll soften up the whiskers too. I'll say that. And that's the eyelash of his other eye on the right that you see there or her eye, excuse me. And uh, yeah, so here we go. We're just going to finish this off. And then um, we will, yeah, do the little mouth. And you notice that the nose is basically like an open heart. Isn't it cute? It is. And uh, yeah, so has, uh, what have you been doing with your time lately? I appreciate you leaving that in the comments so I know what you're doing. I was out um, on the farm here. I like to go out and uh, target practice. So I was out, uh, I put pop cans and then I like to put plastic bottles on the top of sticks so when I hit it, it, it pops down. <laughs> yeah, so I can, uh, I have a lot of fun there just practicing and that's relaxing for me you know I miss the competitions and things you know with the archery competitions I used to be in and I love archery and I love uh, target shooting and um, I love to collect certain things I won't mention them but uh, <laughs> because there's so many but anyway we all know I like to collect craft supplies, <laughs> and I'm not buying. I did so well to, on that no buy for three months, and I'm still, I, I'm not buying. I think you get to a point you don't need anything else. You, you work your stash, you know, work what you have, and make the best of it. I always say we loved it when we bought it, so why not use what we have? There is nothing new under the sun, my friends. What goes around does come around. So you will find something close to what it is you see on the internet or in stores or whatever, you know. I bet you can find it in your stash. If you've been crafting or doing artwork, whatever you do, uh, that you collect supplies, um, I'll guess if you've been doing it for a year at least, you will have that, you know, similar item in your stash. Here I'm making some dots. I'm getting some nice pink. Uh, actually, it's a pink, uh, I would say, like a lobster color. Like a, um, oh, trying to think of the actual color. It's not in the pink family. It is more into the uh, orange pink. And uh, it'll come to me. Everybody's probably saying what the color is, and I can't think of it. But uh, anyway. That's what I use there. You can see, comparing it to the pink jacket, it isn't in the true pink color. So here I go. I'm just doing some more flicks with my um, Prisma pencil, and then we're going to work around the edges. I never think. Here's another thing. Well, I never think. <laughs> People will attest to that. <laughs> yeah. No, she never thinks <laughs> before I do anything. But I... Now I lost track. I start laughing all the time and I lose track of what I'm actually thinking at the time. But I never um, think of what, uh, how can I put this, like how the image is in, in realism. You know what I mean? Uh, because car cartooning, I, I think of this more like cartooning 
And so it just opens up your horizons to different ways to color when you're thinking about your project as cartooning instead of realism. You know, this obviously is, it has a, a real, you know, when you look at it, it doesn't look like a baboon. It looks like a rabbit. So it does have realism to it. But it's, in my way of thinking, it's like having fun with a cartoon uh, style. And I like that, you know. So I like cartooning. I just like uh, art, any kind of art. You know that. If I get uh, inspired, I'll paint or I'll create cards and I'll do brush lettering or calligraphy or anything artsy to just free my mind and get some relaxation. It really does relax you and takes all those burdens of the day, the week, whatever you're storing in your brain, it relaxes you and you, you get away from all that stress by doing creative work. So I encourage you to do that. And like I said, you don't have to be, you know, uh, if all you can do is a stick man, and you know that, get out a stamp and stamp an image. Don't let that uh, veer you away from coloring and getting some free time in there. So I'm trying to think, to oh, here's where I went to the white, but I'm going to come back. I want this to be an under... Uh, as a shadow, more of a shadow as I'm doing this. And uh, I'll get that effect by putting the light value on and then the white and then I'll go to my dark value. And uh, yep, there's the old blush brush. And then I will um, move on. And I hope you're enjoying it. And with a video this long, I, I really do have to chat with you also because what else can you say? I, I don't color as a professional so I can't tell you why the whys and whatever my whys is just well if you feel like doing it <laughs> put it in there <laughs> why not there's my whys why not why not and um, yeah so here we go I uh, trying to think if anything is new with me uh, not too much I am uh, finding a little bit more time for, oh, I did a few strokes there. I put some white under the whiskers because that will make it stand out a bit. And uh, so that's something you can keep in mind as a shadow, you know. You can use a gray, a really light gray, um, like a stone color gray, and uh, that'll help. Whatever you think your eye says, you know, I like that. Then do it and stop. If you're satisfied with it, that's great. That's all you have to be, is satisfied with your own work. If it's a rabbit and it looks like a rabbit, you know, when somebody looks at it, they'll say, oh, that's a rabbit. Yay! <laughs> I've accomplished something, especially drawing it, you know. I, I want people, I don't want them to look at it and think it's a monkey or whatever. So I think, well, that's an accomplishment. It does look like a rabbit. And whether I get all the, you know, the strokes right or the blending right or the shadows right is not here nor there with me. That's just stored up um, stress and I don't want any stress in my life. So I, when I feel stressed about anything, I take time like I'm doing now. I do a little bit of art and unstress and then I go back to uh, doing whatever it is I do. And uh, there you go. That's just a little FYI. Now I'm taking some of that peach again. Yeah, maybe that's the color. It's not what I'm thinking of, though. It's like an ocean shell. It, it's this color that's so pretty. And now I'll go to my browns, my brown tones, and uh, see what do I need to darken up, what do I need to lighten up. And I'm not looking at any image while I'm doing this. I'm, I'm doing this out of my brain, that uh, if I looked at it, what do I think it would look like? And this is what I think it would look like, and I'm happy with it. Um, and I never compare, so I have nothing to compare with. 
if I look at something else and it is so meticulously real, uh, and then I look at mine, it could make you, uh, you know, think, oh, why did I do that? Or that doesn't, you know, maybe I shouldn't have did this or did that. You don't want to do that. Honestly, don't do that. That is just crazy. Yeah. And it doesn't encourage anybody else, right? You want to be an encouragement. And uh, so, yeah, don't compare yourself to somebody else. That's crazy. We're all individuals. We all have certain talents. And we all need to encourage one another. I think that's what's missing, you know. It's just, just making someone smile is a wonderful thing when you're out. Just if somebody just glances at, just smile. And uh, you, you just don't know what other people are going through. And a smile can just do so much for somebody. You know, it just uh, reaches out. And uh, if you can, um, just do a little something. If you're going through to get a coffee, I don't drink coffee, I'm a tea drinker, but whatever. And you feel led to just say, you know what, I want to pay for the person ahead behind me, their coffee. And then, um, you know, if they get anything else, they just have their coffee paid for. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to say, okay, here's $30 for the person behind you, you know. No, here, here's five bucks. And when they get up to five bucks, just say, there you go. Somebody took care of that for you. It really will. Uh, give you a good feeling for the day that you did encourage somebody. So there you go. That's my two cents for today. And uh, we can think about that as we go on our day. And if you don't have uh, the means to do anything, you know, like sh paying for somebody's a smile is even better. That's why I always put smile when I write somebody or I do something because uh, a smile can really brighten someone's day and uh, I think it's important. And, uh, and I love to smile. Yeah. So what's wrong with that, right? So here we are. I'm going to uh, get off of this. I think I'm going to take some of this out as we go towards the bottom because now I'm running out of things to tell you and uh, the video is getting rather long. And I think you understand the fact that I always use tons and tons of color, especially with Prisma pencils with the wax. And I move the wax around with my colorless blender or Gamsol. And I know I've heard other people use baby uh, lotion, um, but I don't like the oiliness of that. I just don't like it. I love the smell of it, but I don't like the... Uh, that oily texture so I stick to Gamsol and uh, so here we go I'm going to stop the video right here and I'm going to try and bring it scale it down a little bit for you okay I went back through the tutorial and I scaled off seven and a half minutes so <laughs> now we're at a hour and 42 minutes that is so long and if you have stuck with me here I really appreciate it and if you do it in sections of time I appreciate that too because I do know time is valuable and we all don't have a ton of it but um, I certainly want to thank you for one reason I like spending time with you and I like sharing with you as well here we're going to just put those little black dots you know just accentuate them on here put a few little dots of uh, in the cheeks as well. I think that brings out, and don't forget if you drew a little ear that that ear is there. I will darken up because that ear is at the back. Um, oh, that was the thing I was going to tell you there. Here I'm putting the white strokes in to add some dark ones so it'll have some, um, yeah, it'll have a shadow of white in it. And don't worry where your, the sun is coming from the left, the right, there's no sun coming from anything because I'm doing it on a box for a gift. And I'm not worried where my um, dark tones are going to range is going to be, whatever you want to say. Uh, if it's all going to be on the left and the right or the center. Generally, 
I go with my sweet spots in the center. That makes it easy for you when you're coloring to just lighten up everything in the center. Or you could just say, you know what, whatever looks good to me, that's, that's what I do a lot as well because this is fun and um, you do just want to know that underneath anything is going to be darker and yeah so go with that so here I'm just going in with all different shades of browns I'll lighten up on top of the white because I can go back and add the white but uh, we shall see what I'm going to do here this is a dark brown I will go in and start making the little fuzzy fur for the a bunny and I think she is adorable whether it's uh, you know whether the sweet spots are in the right spot or not I say if you add sweet spots do it around the eye because the eye is darker and it always looks nice to have that nice sweet white spot around the eye the nose is nice and of course in the ears because the ears are bent and you're going to get some nice sweet spots. That means just lighter spots in there. Now, I really did bring my um, a hand into play there. Boy, it looks like a chubby hand. But, uh, yeah, I have, I, I've went off of Coca-Cola, off of Pop. I have a Pepsi just now and again. I'm almost down to my... Uh, my high school weight which is wonderful I've been trying to take off you know uh, I, 15 pounds I really didn't uh, worry about how many pounds I just wanted to be uh, I just didn't like that extra 15 pounds on me so I have once I got off pop it's amazing that you get right back down to fighting weight and that's a good thing too. add some pink in the white eye of course and lilac. I always like adding a little bit of lilac and pink because the eye is not white. Okay, you have all of the uh, you have color in your eye. It is not the white spots are not pure white. So always remember to add a little bit of pink, a little bit of violet in that white, and it will make it look a little bit more realistic if you're going for realism. Sorry about that. I must have just got an um, email. So here I go back to my, my left and right hands. <laughs> ah, yeah, it's, uh, oh, look at that. I just got an announcement saying that Spellbinders has a warehouse sale, but I'm not shopping. So that's good. I hope everybody gets to enjoy some of the warehouse sale. And uh, there you have it. I'm going back and I'm just going to darken the edges of the bunny's face. Then we're going to go down, oh yeah, here's where you can see I'm adding these flicks behind the whiskers to give it some shadow. And then we're going to add, I'm going to show you something else that I did on here. I think you're really going to like, because you can't just leave the craft paper craft in the background. You do have to add something. And uh, I was really happy with what I decided to do. And that's all I need to do. I need to be happy. And I hope Bob and... Mary enjoy getting this package. It will go out in the mail shortly. I have it all packed here. I just have to wrap it and send it off. And then I will um, do some more projects and possibly get... I'm watching myself color. This is so funny. I'm watching to see my thought process as I'm doing it. Now I'm going to pop down. I'm going to break away from the face, I think, for just a minute. Sometimes it's good to back away when you're coloring and then come back and look at it. You get a new perspective. If you're always staring at the same thing, you don't have the same, you know, it starts to look, I don't know, you don't see things in it that you see if you kind of break away and then come back and all of a sudden you go, oh, no, 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 I should have made that darker. I should lighten that up or I should add a sweet spot there. Oh, and another thing, I went around the box. So you always have to... <laughs> I'm sorry, I was thinking of this. You always have to remember to lift the box up so that you color the things that are on the side. That, that'd help, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm trying to keep my hand on my napkin here. 
uh, my paper towel and I'm going to go in and remember where the soft spots are on my flower, the lighter spots on the flower. Now the inside of the petals will be dark. That's all you have to remember, my friends. The inside petal, the closest thing to the middle, will be darker and the outside will be lighter. That is all you have to remember. And uh, like I said, I love to add red as my base and then I will lighten up the red as I go on. And I will add to the white, then I'll put the white back. Um, it's just kind of like a playtime, but if I'm going to inspire you or encourage you, I would say just to remember on petals that the outer petals are gonna hit the sun, right? But the inner petal, uh, where the other petal uh, sits on it, that's dark. So just remember, outer light, inner dark. And you're pretty well okay. And you can make your flowers look uh, real, or you can add your own touch to them by adding texture lines. And, uh, uh, you know, if you look at a flower close up, like a rose or a uh, any kind of flower, now, I like roses, but you know, sorry, there comes another email. Um, I love lilacs. I have a thing for lilacs, and I have a beautiful lilac tree out the back here, and they don't stay up long enough. to. I always, as soon as it comes into full bloom, I always go and pick me a lovely vase full of them and put them on my piano and just enjoy the scent and the look of beautiful white and purple pink lilacs you know they don't cost you anything if you have a tree if you don't have a tree take a walk somebody else will have a tree especially if you're in the country like me it's just like you know you can knock on the door and say excuse me do you mind if i pick a little bit of your lilacs there and generally they'll say no i don't mind at all and then you just come in with a backhoe and you take their tree <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, and plant it in your own on your own property. <laughs> right now, I have so many um, daffodils that came up this crazy weather. You know, we have snow a couple of weeks ago, like a snowstorm, hail, snow, whatever. And then the next day, it's seventy-five degrees. I mean, go figure. And so the, it's really messing up the blooms and the flowers. Uh, yeah, whatever. I'm not a flower person around my uh, home. I, I like it clean, and I, I don't like uh, bushes and flowers. I, I just To me, that just adds spiders. And uh, yeah, I, I keep the around it clean. And um, if you get away from, you know, out in the on the property, yes, all, there's daffodils, there's lilac trees, there's beautiful maple trees, uh, there's uh, walnut trees, and I can enjoy them back there. I just like keeping around the house nice and clean. And um, yeah, and the lawn cut. <laughs> yeah, it's a big house, and there's lots of work you can do, um, that's for sure. That's why this kind of work is so enjoyable. You don't have to worry about all that. And uh, here we go. So let's see. We're, we're good. Oh, this is what I did different on the flower. This is what I wanted to share with you. I added those vein lines to the flower. I don't know if this is so real when you look at this rose. Um, but I do know when you take a look at any flower it has these veins in them when you hold it you know up to your eyeballs and you're looking at it they do have these veins and so I thought I'd add that I thought it added interest and um, it's my flower for now until I mail it out so I thought I'll do what I want with it <laughs> yeah yes that's my it's my prerogative to do what I want with it it's my crayons it's my paper, so I will add texture lines to it. <laughs> yeah, but that's what's so interesting, you know? And if you've joined me here around my island, I create on an island up in my 
studio here and uh, I always picture you here with me and enjoying the time with me. I, I do like that. So uh, thank you for coming into my, my craft room, studio, whatever you want to call it, my space and enjoying the time with me in the chat and getting to know one another. Yes. I actually went back and um, took a lot of things, sped a lot of things up trying to get uh, it finished for you. I know it's a long tutorial and um, yeah, but there's a lot that went into it. Like I did some brush lettering, nothing too fancy dancy and uh, let's move on to the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so you want sweet spots in your leaves. You want the multiple green colors. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> uh, let's see. What I did is, uh, you know you, lo you love to put some veins in your leaves. That's a no-brainer. And then add a little white in there, some little sweet spot in your leaves, and then you can go over it with light or dark. This is your preference to your leaves. Uh, it always looks good to have some veins in there, uh, the bottom veins darker, the top veins lighter, or do it whatever way makes you feel good. How's that? And um, now I'm working on this flower. This is just an odd flower to me. It doesn't have no shape, but when I was looking at the picture, it did have something similar to this anyway that was on the bottom. I was kind of thinking of a lily. It was like a lily um, petal. So that's what I kept in my mind and I just drew it like, um, let me see, was it a, yeah, I was thinking about a lily when I did this. So there you go. I wanted to put some mauve and or mauve in there and uh, pinks as well, but I just wanted to bring out the pinks, so I had to change the color up. And I thought a nice matching tone would be to go into the lilac colors, purples, you know. And keep it soft because everything else is soft. Um, and yeah, there's not much to say when you are coloring like this. See how I bounce right over <laughs> to the flower? Because I noticed, okay, I want to put some more sweet spots in there. Lighten it up on the outside, in the middle. Keep it dark on the inside. I know I go back and darken up later. But I did go back in the tutorial and take more out, as you can see. It was at an hour and 50 minutes. I'm now down to an hour and 38 minutes. I mean, that's the time of a whole movie. If you watch movies. Now, I haven't watched movies, my friends. As I'm drawing my leaves, you'll see the colors I choose. I go from the bright pinks to the mossy pinks to the real line. Uh, I move in my white sweet spots and I always add that little kiss curl at the end of my leaves that you'll notice there. And uh, oh yeah, you never know what I'm going to do, right? That's the beauty of me. And uh, here you go. You can just watch me color and I'll start gabbing. So here, uh, oh yes, yellow. There's a lot of yellow trees, uh, trees, <laughs> leaves. Yes, a lot of yellow, uh, I'm trying to think, like um, elm leaves maybe? Uh, but I don't think of that when I'm coloring. I just think they're leaves and I'll color them whatever green I feel I want them to look like, to stand out, different. And then you can make those little notches like I'm doing here on the outside of the leaf so it doesn't look so uh, flat. You have just a little bit of imagery in there. And that's when I'm doing the imagery. Oh yes. Uh, I, you know, I had something in my head I was going to say there, uh, but I can't remember. It's, uh, I just found out it was three degrees Celsius outside. Uh, being Canadian, we are dealing with Celsius, but I still deal with Fahrenheit because uh, it's just the way I work. Um, oh, I did put a leaf, or a butterfly, excuse me, and as you can see, I do have my house coat on, so I must have been either cold when I was doing this, uh, a little chilly, or it was at night. I can't remember uh, which it was. 
because I generally don't have a house coat on when I create, right? You know that. Uh, there we go. I just added black and gold to the back. And uh, I don't know why I did that. I wanted a butterfly. And I wasn't going to put it on the front. So here we are. Let's get back to this. I took out a stencil. I'm gonna, I hope I put this in the video later on because I made this these bricks my own. I separated them when the embossing powder went on. And I'll show you that. It's just a little thing I like to do so it doesn't look so uniform. I don't like uniformity, like, you know, preciseness. I like to add just, uh, you know, a few bricks not there. Like, a, I don't know, everything just not so perfect. Because in life, things aren't perfect. We're not perfect. Perfection makes you stress. <laughs> yeah, so here I go back to the stress thing. It must be on my mind, you know. It's just like, um, it keeps you young uh, if you're not stressed. It, uh, you don't get um, wrinkles and, and those type of things because you're not stressed. Your skin is relaxed and uh, we don't need stress in our life, my friends. And so why when you're coloring and creating do you want to feel stress. These are my dollar store and nothing's a dollar uh, sponges here that I'm using on this and I use the light hand. I'm going from the mustard brown color on the right and then I'll move over to the chocolate just to give these bricks some of their own identity. You know stress must be been on my mind when I was doing this video. Do you think? Why am I talking about it so much? Because I really try to eliminate stress in my life. I don't, I try, here, oh, here we go. All right, so the ink is wet. So now I'm putting on my clear embossing powder and then I will take a knife and I will, like a craft knife thingy and a blade and then I'll go over it so that it separates the brick. They're not so, see down there? I make them kind of look wobbly and, um, yeah, and I put this on because in my mind, I was thinking I was going to send this out in the mail like this. I wasn't putting it into a box. I was going to send it, I was going to cure it, uh, like I show you. I did the whole process as if I was going to mail it, but then I changed my mind like I always do because that's what we get to do, change our mind, if you like. So here I am, um, it looks so odd for me to see myself creating with a house coat. Oh no, the, I must have been cold. It was in the day. I must have had a chip because I can see I have clothing um, underneath there. Like I can see kind of like the bulk of a sweater. So good thing. Although it doesn't matter to me either way whether I have my house coat on or not. It's like, uh, but I just wanted to share that because I know not too many people see me in my nightwear. <laughs> Ah, yeah, here we go. This is what happens. If I run into things to say, I just start laughing. That's all. We'll just laugh through the tutorial. Why not? So now I decide to take the lighter tones in the clouds with my cloud stencil. And I love to add bright white behind there. And you'll see how I do this in a second, how I tone it down. I'm going to pull it up into the pink with a lighter stroke so that it looks like um, it's fading out. It's not so blunt and in your face. Uh, yeah, so there I'm just using a light hand and uh, yeah, brighten that up right there. That's great. And I like this. I like the brick idea. It, it just pulls you away from the image so the image is not standing alone if you know what I mean. And uh, then I'm going to use my um, hand cream. And we're going to talk about that when I get there. There is the Tim Holtz glazing medium that if you're going to mail it and you don't want, you know, you put it over top of your, it, your coloring because it protects it from water. And it's a resist. It's just a resist. It's a glaze resist. But then I found that my cream, my hand cream that I use. It, uh, let me just grab it. 
Now, my hand cream, the Burt's Bees, I talk about this all the time. If you want to protect your uh, images, your painting, your coloring, anything, you want to protect it from um, water and protect it, sending it through the mail, you use the Distress Glaze. Now, the Distress Glaze comes in one fluid ounce bottles, but my Burt's Bees Almond and Milk Hand Cream, uh, it comes in, well, it's grams, but it's double the amount, and you pay less. And uh, it works the same. Now, you will see as I go to do it, the difference. They, they, they do the same job, but you get double when you use the Burt's Bees Almond and Milk Hand Cream, and it is perfect for your hands. It's a lovely, lovely, makes your skin soft and subtle. Yes, soft and subtle skin, that's what we want. And uh, you can use it on your face too, to have soft and subtle on your face. You can use it on your hands. You, everywhere when you, when you want to keep your skin soft. Oh, just bent into my work here. So here we are, we're going to, I put the Copic markers on here. I don't know if I missed that because I was looking down at my Burt's Bees. But I use Copic markers where there's no color. I grab uh, a lilac color or a pink color and I fill in. Oh, here I come. Look at that. My brain was thinking ahead of me for once. So here it's going to dry nice and subtle, but I'm going to fill in the lines, the breaking of where I added the color. You always get those break marks. So I am um, filling that in. And wherever, you know, there wasn't any color, I just take it out of the, you know, my lighting so that I can see it in a natural state. And, oh yeah, flick it off there. And then we're going to start the brush lettering. So I need some lines here. As you can see, I, I'm not particular that they're at precise, but I want to do some nice brush lettering. And um, I was practicing. I should have really practiced because I want to put Bob and Mary. So here I had Mary, and I said, I don't want Mary first, I want Bob first. So I just erased it with the fat eraser. <laughs> My plump eraser, how's that? Yeah, I'm talking about weight loss there. Don't you find you put on 5 to 10 pounds over the winter because you're kind of snuggled in? And, and that's what I meant when I was saying, once I got off the Coca-Cola, I was able to take those 5 or 10 pounds. They're, they're starting to shed to get back to the weight you wanted you want to be your natural weight right and uh, yeah so that's what I was talking about there here's Mary in some brush lettering I am just doing it with a light pencil taking a look at it uh, then I'm going to do a little bit of practice work on a piece of paper that's craft just to kind of get my hand to move and flow the way I want it to. Because once you put your, this is my Tombow black marker, once you put that down, there's no going back, my friends. No going back. You cannot erase it, obviously. So I'm going to check on where I want my strokes to be. Your down strokes are always thicker than your up strokes. So, um, yeah, remember that. And, uh, Thank you for those that were thinking of me when I said, oh, there's my upstroke is thin, as you can see. My downstroke is thick. And then you can go back and thicken your, stro your downstrokes. Don't worry about that. And uh, this, uh, this is the fun part of the project, is doing a little bit of brush lettering. And uh, there's Bob's name. And then we're going to put, I'm going to go back with my real thin uh, eraser, my click eraser, my white beautiful click eraser. I'm going to try to leave all these links in the description for you. And I have to get over on my blog. I've been neglecting my blog. I apologize. Um, my my days have been busy. And uh, yeah, so here's the and. Just that simple, my friends. Just that simple. Stress-free. Just add some letters there. And <laughs> yeah, if you're going to make a word, add some letters, right? So that they are a word. And uh, here we go. But for those that were thinking about me when I told you I was going off of my pop, not drinking so much, I certainly um, appreciate you thinking about me and 
Uh, I was going to say that being off the pop has made, has given me clarity in my mind. But I can't say that <laughs> because I just forgot where I was, <laughs> what I was saying. <laughs> I mean, isn't that like me? It's just crazy. <laughs> That's why doing a voiceover, you just got to do it. You just got to do it and have fun and, and make your channel fun. And, uh, yeah, Tombow Marker. That's what I wanted to say to you, Tombow Marker. I must have gotten warm because I took my house coat off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here I'm going back and just adding some curly cues and some uh, different strokes, you know, making sure my downstrokes are thicker than my upstrokes. And uh, using my thin eraser, the one thing about the Tombow Markers, they don't bleed. And you can do this. You can take out the lines and it looks like you just quickly put Bob and Mary on there. It's good to draw the lines, let me tell you that. Because, you you know, your eyes want to take you in places you don't want to go. Uh, you think you're going to get it straight, but you won't. <laughs> Maybe you will, but I won't, that's for sure. So here I'm just taking my blush brush in my left hand giving my left hand some exercise and grabbing the eraser in my right hand and look at that my friends we are headed there's the Burt's Bees I love 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 and this is where I'm starting out you take the sponge now with I didn't realize this right at the, right at the start but it will lift some of your color from your Prisma pencil just a little it won't do a bad job trust me just a little but um, I am going to add some of the glaze, too, to just show you that both of them do the same job. Now, if I was sending this through the mail, I would have to have the stamps on first. This is a coating. You're not going to be able to lick those stamps. Well, hopefully you get the non-lick ones. You're not going to get them to stick once you put the glaze on, okay? The glaze is a protectant. It keeps any wetness off of whatever you've created. And so that's what I'm doing here. And you can see the size difference. You are getting a lot more for your money buying the Burt's Bees hand, Almond Milk Hand Cream. You will love the smell. You will love what it does. I'm taking my heat tool and I'm setting it right away. And I should have never put my hand like that. I should have grabbed my blush brush. But, you know, don't do as I do. Don't do as I say, do what I do, or don't do what I do, do what I say. I don't know how that goes. But anyway, you can see that I had a lot of fun creating this for you, Bob and Mary. Thank you so much for your support through the years on my channel. It is a joy for me to send this out as a random act of kindness. Uh, it just makes me feel good to do this. And... Uh, I, I need to get into doing more. So have yourself a blessed week. Thank you for subscribing and liking my tutorials. I appreciate that. At the end, just press my face. <laughs> just press on that thing. And uh, you will be subscribed. And you can press the bell so you get notification. All those good things on YouTube. Please enjoy the pictures. And thank you once again for joining me. Take care, everybody. Mm -hmm.